Hello all. In this AWS series, we are going to take a look at S3. So to go to S3, you are just typing S3 and selecting the item from AWS Management Console. While it is loading, uh, S3 is a very popular service uh, which can be compared to Box or Dropbox or Google Drive which we use to store files. S3 is simple storage service used to store uh, files and folders by Amazon AWS. When we talk about S3, the first thing which we need to discuss is the concept called bucket. Uh, bucket is nothing but a collection of files and folders. So let's see how to create a bucket. Here, uh, click on create bucket. Then it will ask for the bucket name and there are quite a few configurations required here. We will just go through one by one here. Uh, important thing to understand is bucket name should be unique and it should be unique globally. So it should be very, it is very important to give a unique name for your bucket. I am just giving .grid1 and each bucket can be created in different regions. So there are multiple regions available here. So I'll just go by, if you want to uh, create a bucket in uh, Mumbai region, you can do that. Or you can just uh, go by default. Then uh, you can just go through different uh, configuration options, set permissions and uh, uh, finally review it and create the bucket or else default configuration you can just create uh, here itself so uh, what it does is it will create a bucket called the dot gauge one in this uh, Ohio region so this is how a bucket is created now let's go into this bucket just click on this bucket it will take you to this region here we can upload files, upload, create folders, and uh, um, there are different options here. So let let first create a uh, file here. So uh, just upload a file, click on this upload, and then add file. It's normal browser upload. I am just selecting a, a simple PNG file, image file, and I click on here. So what happens is load this file <coughs> into this bucket what we have created. So it's straightforward. So it will create a uh, file, uh, PNG file what we have selected, and then create a um, file here. Now uh, let's create a folder. I'm just creating a folder called images and save. So a folder is created. So like this, uh, you have a file system here. Uh, you can create a file system, store the files. Um, now, uh, when it comes to when we uploaded, there were like multiple options uploading. So uh, the important thing is this storage is having multiple and different types of classes. Uh, we call it a storage class. So let's see how and what are those storage classes. So this basically this particular storage class, this is called as standard storage class. So by uh, we selected the default value. So uh, it uploaded as a standard storage class. So now I'm going to upload again one more file. Select a second file. Now, instead of uploading, I am I'm going to uh, click on next. It will take you to the other option. So here, uh, you have different options of uh, setting the permission. So we'll go through these permissions uh, in a different uh, session. But um, here you can, uh, while uploading itself, you can give the permissions. And then click next. So here the property. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, by default, the standard storage class is selected in different storage classes. Standard means uh, normally all the files which we are storing, which is frequently accessed, would be st standard 
storage class. If you want to um, say, for example, uh, you uploaded uh, 20 files, and then um, after a month, uh, you are not accessing these files very frequently, then these files can be changed into a different storage class. It can be uh, standard um, IA, so that is nothing but long lived, infrequently accessed data. Uh, it can be changed into a different uh, storage class. So, why do you need to convert these files into different uh, storage classes? Mainly because this storage S3 uh, costs you money. So, depending on which uh, region you are and what storage class you are, based on all these things, your building will be kicked in. So, uh, obviously, standard will be having a, a bigger building period and it is having a, a less latency. So, if you, if you say, for example, uh, you want to store a file which is not been accessed for a year uh, as a kind of archive, uh, then you can uh, move it to Glacier. The problem is that only problem here is that these files will be having a much higher latency. Uh, say, for example, you can, you might be able to access these files uh, in a one hour time, whereas standard uh, storage uh, classes, uh, files can be uh, retrieved. Um, quickly like um, real time this is the difference so sometimes if a regular um, access the files if you try to store in uh, a glacier class uh, that might not be practical so uh, main advantage is the cost advantage so now i select um, standard and then click next so it will just give you a review uh, and then uh, you can just upload so this is how uh, these are the different classes and this is how we store the files. So these files are getting stored here. Now in S3 as we told uh, it's standard uh, storage class um, and then maybe these files can be moved into different storage class like um, IA as I mentioned. infrequently accessed files or maybe after that uh, we can just move into glaciers so uh, this is called a file life cycle so let's look into how do we manage a, a file life cycle here so uh, you manually can move these files into different storage classes depending on our requirement and also this aws gives you another option uh, where you can automatically move these files to different storage classes depending on your rules. So let's see how we do this. For that, uh, you are in uh, S3. Uh, this is the bucket we have created. Here you can click on management. <coughs> In management, there will be something called a life cycle. Make sure that you are selected in a life cycle and click on add life cycle rule. Now you can give a rule for this. So here I am giving dot get each one rule one, and then uh, you can uh, apply this entire rule to all the items in this bucket, and then click on next. Like that, you can add a tax, <coughs> and then um, there are so many uh, options which we can just play around. Like for the current version or previous versions, depending on our requirement, we can say, for example, uh, you want to apply a rule uh, to the previous version of the file. Say, for example, you upload same file two times, so you want to apply the earlier version to be moved to a different uh, storage class. So then you can select the previous version here so here i am uh, selecting the current version and then click next click add translations here um, from the standard uh, where do you need to move so to standard ai or glacier after uh, how many days so um, glacier after 30 days uh, or maybe like 45 days and then um, you can add more translations like move so that uh, uh, you can just once uh, maybe after uh, five years if you want to delete the files you can set this expiration as well even the whatever configuration we are doing that can be expired after uh, specific dates then you can just select 
um, and review and then click save so this applied uh, uh, on this entire bucket so what happens here is that after specifically uh, 45 days this will be moved to uh, standard IE and then after uh, 250 days this will be moved to uh, Glacier so basically we are saving the cost here and it is applicable for all the files so when you click on overview you will be seeing all the files and folders which we are created in the bucket and it is applicable for all the files i cannot just show you here because this uh, this will get into effect only after 45 days or minimum i have to wait for 30 days so that is how storage standards works and then uh, life cycle management happens for these files now one problem with uh, this uh, life cycle management is that Say for example, we put uh, 45 days as uh, for this file, so that uh, after 45 days, these files will uh, move to the different uh, standard uh, storage standard, right? So, but uh, still, uh, even after 45 days, these files are being used very frequently. Uh, still, these files should be moved to uh, another standard as per this configuration. So that is where uh, a new concept called intelligent tiring comes into picture. So problem uh, of automatically moving to a different storage class, even if file is been accessed uh, quite frequently after a specific time. So there is something called uh, uh, intelligent tire. So uh, when you click on upload, add a file and uh, try to upload instead of standard what we can do is click on next and in the properties instead of standard you can just select intelligent tiring so basically what it does is it will intelligently look into the access pattern as well as the uh, time frame whatever we are giving so it will add a little more intelligence to the, the rules what we have created to move these files uh, between different st storage classes so that is what uh, uh, is intelligent uh, tiring is used for uh, again it is for uh, smartly saving the money now le let's look for example say this funnel.png is the one file which we stored uh, if you don't have uh, um, switch on the versioning if you are uploading the same file again it will get overwritten and the earlier version will be lost so how do we enable versioning let's look into that so when you click on properties there is something called versioning click there and just enable it so that uh, versioning will be enabled for this please be aware that for each version or each features we are enabling here it will charge uh, additionally for the S3 usage. So now we enabled it. Come back to the overview. Let's look into the files and all these properties we are enabling it for in their bucket here. So now uh, versions is hidden and when you click on show, there is no new versions available. Everything is uploaded only once. So it is showing as this. So now I'm hiding it again. And let's try to upload the same file one more time. Say for example, funnel.png, let, let's upload it one more time. We have enabled the versioning and uploading the same file again. So the file is uploaded now. Uh, there is no difference uh, here, but when you click show versioning, it will show different versions of same files available here. Um, to look into this versioning a uh, little more better, I'll create three versions of a text file. Let's see how it will behave. I am creating a file with uh, one line as test1 and saving it in the desktop. Now let me upload that file.
this is the file in the desktop I am uploading this file versioning has been enabled and then I am just uploading this so file is available here now what I am going to do is I am going to uh, add another line test2 saving this file uploading it again Now the file got uploaded again uh, one more time last one more time I am just creating another uh, third line here saving it and uploading now this file got uploaded let's see the uh, version This file is having all the three versions available here. So now you want to see this file, you click, right click, and open. So it will show the default and the, the latest version, which is having three lines. <clears throat> so if you just select the other file, uh, second version, and open, it will show you the second version that is with the two lines so uh, let's uh, so this is basically uh, versioning and uh, there are lot of use cases in devops and many other places versioning can be used much effectively by default it will be always showing the latest version of the file when you uh, click and open it now let's look into replication so this is a little more interesting and advanced topic this can be implemented in uh, dr uh, strategies so click on uh, let's create so so to create uh, show a demo for uh, replication I am going to create one more bucket uh, let me call it as dot grease 2 and uh, let me create it in a different region this time I will just create it in Mumbai and then create it so let's make sure that let's make sure that uh, this newly created uh, bucket is really empty and then yeah there is nothing here so let me just go back and <clears throat> now let's see how do we do uh, replication important thing here is uh, when we do the replication both the uh, source and target uh, bucket should have uh, versioning enabled so anyway uh, in our uh, earlier bucket uh, versioning was enabled to show the demo so I am just going to the newly created bucket and enabling the versioning so it is a procedure where we click on properties and then go to the bucket click on properties and then enable versioning now it's enabled here now let me come back and go to the uh, first so basically what i am trying to do here is that uh, dot uh, replication is going to be enabled uh, for uh, dot grish one and it will be replicated to dot grish two which is in different uh, two different 
uh, regions one from o ohio uh, to mumbai so i'm just going to uh, first uh, target and then in the management tab you can see replication option here click on that yeah so here uh, create a new rule so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to replicate in their bucket that is uh, dot girish one and click on next here uh, it is asking for the destination bucket so there are different options you can click on destination bucket here you can click uh, you can choose the bucket which is there in your own account or in somebody else account um, given that you have access to account so here i select uh, my own account and then it will show all the buckets which is available in my account so here i am going to i have only two uh, one is dot Girish one and another is dot Girish two. So I'm just selecting the second one here, which is shown. And there are different options. Say, for example, while you are migrating or uh, replicating, you can even change the storage class as we discussed earlier. So uh, all those options are available here to save uh, uh, and optimize the cost. So now click on next. so you have to give a um, iam rule here so you can just give it as create a new and then select um s3 dot create one replication rule and then click next so it will show you that source is dot grid one and uh, destination is dot grid two and replication rule is this one and then click on save so replication is configured successfully now let's see what will happen here so in dot girish2 uh, we checked and there was nothing available in that location let's wait for some time and then do a refresh here Maybe we'll just go to dot Girish one one more time and then uh, upload one more fresh file. By that time, we'll see what is happening in dot Girish two. I'm uploading funnel 5 and then click upload so uh, make sure that I'm uploading to dot girish1 itself now let's go back and see what's happening in dot girish2 we haven't any uploaded anything manually to dot girish2 yet Now I'm just refreshing and see uh, in dot girish2 uh, funnel 5 uh, reached here. So the from the time when we enabled replication, the file started coming in here. So we just need to upload into one location and it will automatically get replicated here. And even the versioning, whatever we are doing, that version, including the version, it will be replicated here. So this is about uh, replication and one another thing is uh, if you change the file and upload that re uh, changes will be reflected here but if you delete a file from the source that will not be ref uh, replicated in the destination because uh, by mistake if you delete a file uh, that should not be getting deleted it from the destination so destination uh, will not be impacted by a delete operation other than that all the operations will be replicated to uh, the second location
I am just going to the first location, uh, first bucket and then uh, deleting one file, same file. So yeah, select here and then in action, delete. Yeah, so maybe we'll just uh, check the other location and uh, make sure that that's not getting deleted here and that is as per design it is still there so this is something which we need to keep in mind now let's see uh, how to use this s3 as a web hosting so uh, we can use S3 for uh, web hosting, but only catch here is uh, we can only uh, use it for static file hosting, not any um, dynamic uh, websites cannot be hosted in S3. Create few folders uh, so that we'll have a, our uh, simple website ready here. So let me just upload few folders and files and then continue with this. Okay. I. Uh, created few uh, folders and uh, images and scripts and other things for this uh, symbol uh, website and then now I'm just adding one file called index.html which is the home page uh, for this test website uh, it's there in my home desktop and I'm just uploading it so that file is getting uploaded um, so images script styles and then this index file so this is these are the files which is used for my website all the other files can be removed but i'm just keeping it there and then um, let's see what we need to do to make this uh, s3 bucket for hosting my static files so click on properties static web hosting is there click on static web hosting use this bucket for host my website option click on that and then uh, so this is the url which uh, is been provided to me as the endpoint let me make a note of that and then uh, here what it is saying is that what what is your uh, home page file called so it is index.html index.html and if some error is happening which file has to be which html file has to be shown i am giving error.html and then uh, yeah so there is no other options required and then click on save so now uh, one more uh, step is required so now what happens is this this uh, bucket is being enabled for hosting this ideally speaking this file this is the url i am going to uh, open a new tab and then browse it and see what happens it's showing forbidden 403 yeah so why it is so uh, we need to give permission uh, so let's go and see dot grish one is the folder which we made it as uh, hosting so here it says that it is not public so click on on left hand side you will see block public access click on that and make sure that it is not blocking any public access click on edit and make sure that block all public access if it is checked like this make sure that it is unchecked and save changes and that type confirm and submit now come back uh, to our s3 now go to 
the bucket which we made it as hosting click on permissions now we don't have permission public permission for this folder make sure that block public access uncheck this block or public access uh, should be unchecked and then save it this is the first thing second thing actually confirm that is done now come to bucket policy so there are two different types of policies actually three different types of policies uh, one um, enabling that public access here and then in bucket policy you need to have a json json entry uh, like this i'll explain what actually this does and put it here and then um, save it so basically what it says is that um, it is giving public access to allow access to all the objects within this uh, bucket for the uh, bucket name so we, in my case it is dot girish one so making these changes here and then click on save so you see here it is marked as public now so you just save it one more time and then uh, basically uh, this bucket which is dot grish one is made as public now let's go back to our url and try Well, wow. so this is how the this is the index page what we have uploaded and the images and scripts which we use. Yeah, so uh, by this, um, I know this video is almost more than uh, thirty minutes. So I'm just winding up here, and let's look at other set sections of AWS in next videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.